welcome everybody to today's call. I'm excited to have our Spectrum Protect Development Technical Lead, Dominic Mulevicki out of Germany, speaking today on the call. Today's call is going to be an introduction into MN Backup and how it interfaces with our Spectrum Scale GPFS. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Dominic. Thank you, Trisha. I will do a brief introduction to give you an overview where we are in terms of the integration between the product. And then I will provide you some overview and some introduction to the different ways you can use backup to protect your spectrum scale file system. And I prepared that in some kind of a t-shirt sizing here. So that means starting with an S, M, and L size of backup and configuration and ending then with an XL configuration for extremely large environments. Slide number four gives you an overview of the different topics where Spectrum Protect and Spectrum Scale integrate. In the middle of the slide you can see the Spectrum Protect server and the integration here means that the Spectrum Protect server can store storage pools of different types, for example file or container pools or also random disk pools in Spectrum Scale file systems and can take benefit of the advanced Spectrum Scale storage features to have a higher throughput for backup and archiving against the Spectrum Protect server. On the right hand, Spectrum Protect snapshot is shown, which integrates also with Spectrum Scale and uses the software snapshot facilities of Spectrum Scale to protect your environment with snapshots. Then on the left hand at the bottom you can see Spectrum Protect for Space Management which is also known as HSM for Unix and this has also a close integration with Spectrum Scale and acts as an external storage pool of the Spectrum Scale information lifecycle management engine. On the left hand on the top this is what we talk about today. This is the integration between the Spectrum Protect Backup Archive Client and Spectrum Scale and different ways to protect your Spectrum Scale file system. Then we have another integration which is called SOBAR. SOBAR is a scaling out disaster recovery solution. There will be some more information in the slide deck today because SOBAR plays also a role here and you can take advantage of SOBAR for your backup and archive environment for spectrum scale as well. So now starting with the different approaches, starting with my uh, t-shirt sizing app, which means that you can run the standard progressive incremental backup which comes with Spectrum Protect to protect and to back up your data from your Spectrum Scale file system. The pro here is that, it's, that this is really a simple setup. So you have just your file system and start your progressive incremental on this file system which is a Spectrum Scale file system. Therefore the usage and setup is very simple, configuration is simple, can be done equal to other file system types. But the cons here is that the performance and scalability is limited compared to options you have with MM Backup. Based on feedback I got from customers and business partners, it seems to be the case that the scalability of this approach goes up to about 25 million of objects in a file system. That means about 25 million of files you can protect here. And it ends at this time. And the reason for that is just that the, the scan time it takes to scan such a huge file system exceeds the backup window customer can establish for a daily backup of such a file system. And this means mainly 8 to 10 hours that the backup can take. But for sure you can use this if you are below these limits. The next approach, and this is the entry point for MM Backup, is you set up your Spectrum Protect Backup Archive client as used before. You do not need to change anything here. And you can for sure have your 
environment and your spectrum scale file system protected with progressive incremental backup before and then switch seamless to the usage of MM backup. You just need to start MM backup here and it will get the information from the Spectrum Protect server on and which data was protected before and will will seamless start with the next incremental backup then. The pros here is that the setup is simple and you just need to start the MM backup and it will do the will do the backup automatically. The performance is very good and the scalability is also very good here. Based on feedback from customers, I got is that we have environments that work very well with up to one billion of objects in a file system with an MM backup that backs up data from a single spectrum scale file system to a single spectrum protect server. And that is the limitation of this environment as well. So all the data goes to a single Spectrum Protect server and it's not split up to multiple servers. So on, sli on slide number eight, I'm describing how such a backup cycle would work. And especially after you have used the Spectrum Protect progressive incremental on the same environment before. You initiate the MM backup run and MM backup will do some kind of an environment evaluation. And that means it will, for example, verify that all nodes in the cluster that should do backup have the Spectrum Protect backup archive client installed. And the Spectrum Protect backup archive client is able to connect to the Spectrum Protect server. And it evaluates as well if MM backup has the same version on all nodes that should be used for backup and that the configuration of Spectrum Protect is correct for the usage with MM backup. So all these things are done automatically at the, at the time you start MM backup. Then if you run MM backup the first time, MM backup will connect to the Spectrum Protect server DB and will collect all the information from, pre from backup that ran before on the same file system. So it will get all the information uh, back from the Spectrum Protect server database and will store this information in a local database, the so-called shadow DB, which is stored in the file system root. And this ShadowDB will have all information from previous backup activities on this file system. Then, in the next step, MM Backup will use the Spectrum Scale policy engine to scan the file system and create a second list of all files in the file system, including all information, metadata information from these files that are relevant for backup. And then after the scan has finished, in the next step, MM Backup will compare the shadow DB, the basis on the Spectrum Protect Server DB content, with the file list that was created with the file system scan. And it will calculate three global lists. The first list will have all the files which were deleted in the file system since the last backup run. And these are the files that can be expired on the Spectrum Protect server. The second global file list will include all the files which have changed metadata. So that means this will be the list of files uh, that must be updated. And update means just database updates on the Spectrum Protect server. And the third list will include all the files which are new or the files which have changed data. So that means the files that must be sent for backup to the Spectrum Protect server. And then after these file lists are created, the file list will be split into smaller chunks and will be sent 
to the Spectrum Protect Backup Archive client on all nodes in the cluster that attempt the MM backup processing and will start multiple backup archive client processes on each node to send these file lists and the files that belong to the file list to the Spectrum Protect server in parallel. The whole backup processing, expiring incremental backup and also selective backup can run in parallel on all nodes in the cluster. And this explains the much higher scalability and also performance of this type of backup compared to the progressive incremental from Spectrum Protect. At the end of all this processing, MM Backup will just analyze the results of the processing, so it will collect all the return codes from the Spectrum Protect Backup Archive client, uh, will compare all the return codes, will verify that everything was good, and then it will end. And with that, the backup processing ends. In the past, and this is with Spectrum Scale, Prior, version 4.1, uh, at the end of an ML backup processing, it was required to do some post-processing of the shadow DB. But this is not longer needed. This, but this causes that people who worked with MM backup in the past have seen that this post-processing that took a lot of time decreases the overall backup performance. It's just worthful to mention here that this post-processing is not longer there. That means the overall backup performance has significantly increased since spectrum scale in version 4.1. On slide number 9, I have entered some information that compares backup processing between the Spectrum Protect progressive incremental and MM backup. And as you can see, in the most cases, the processing is equal. So that means both to for sure identify files that have changed and send a new copy to the server, or both are able to identify files that have metadata changes and updating these files on the Spectrum Protect server. But in some cases, the processing of progressive incremental and MM backup differ. And these cases can be summarized with a situation that changes were well done on the Spectrum Protect server, which has no direct impact to the processing on the client side. For example, if someone accidentally deletes the file space, on the Spectrum Protect server, then the next progressive incremental would be that for sure because it connects to the TSM server, queries the file space, and identifies that the file space was deleted. MM Backup does not connect to the Spectrum Protect server for each backup because it uses the shadow DB that was created before to identify which files have to be sent. That means if the file space was deleted, and then backup has no chance to detect that. The same happened if files were accidentally deleted on the Spectrum Protect server, but not the whole file space. So that's the same mechanism. And another difference is that include rules that implement and store in a management class binding that change would lead in the next progressive incremental backup to a rebind of the files to the new management class. MM Backup does not see this management class binding because it operates just on the file system on client side. And therefore, the binding happens not directly, but it will happen if the file that I included with these rules will change on the client side. That means if the files change and will be sent to the Spectrum Protect server again, at the time of this sending, the rebind will happen. If you use Spectrum Protect for space management as well in your environment, both processing, so the Spectrum Protect progressive incremental, but also an backup, will be able to identify any migration state changes and will update the object 
on the Spectrum Protect server. And this is working for both, that's equal. The same is for files that we are not successfully processed in the past. The next backup run will just take these files and will try to backup it again. On slide number 10, you can see this is more or less an overview how such an environment where you use MM backup could look like and could be configured. So if you look at the orange box here, this is just a brief high level overview of your file system. You have some root directories in your file system root and protect them with MM backup. The configuration in the Spectrum Protect DSM sys file would be that you define or you have to define at least one server sensor and this server sensor is used to back up the full file system. And then in the blue box you can see how you can start and then back up and can use and then back up to protect this file system. So that means you specify with dash dash tsm dash servers the server name you have used in your server sensor in the DSM sys file and then, and that's important, you use with dash dash scope file system. So that means that MM backup will do a scan of the full file system and will send all the data which differs uh, to the last backup run to the, to the Spectrum Protect server. On the next level, you can use MM backup to send data to multiple Spectrum Protect servers. The environment is typically an installation with a double digit number of nodes and more than one file system, so you can run the backup to different file systems in parallel. And you have more than one or two or three nodes available for backup so that the system utilization that will happen because of the processing of MM backup can be shared between multiple cluster nodes. And the scalability here goes up to hundreds of millions of files and to hundreds of terabytes of files because you can split the data sent to the Spectrum Protect server to multiple servers. And the processing will happen as follows, as shown on slide number 12. You can just use the exclude rule in the DSM sys to define multiple server standards in your DSM sys file and then do a binding of the directories to the, the server standard by defining exclude rules. And on one of the next slides I will have an example for that, how this is working. What you can do for sure, you can do that on an on existing environment. So that means a portion of your file system is relatively static and you define that this portion of the file system goes to your legacy Spectrum Protect server you used in the past for this file system. And then maybe you have another portion of your file system which grows significantly and then you can define on a high level that this directory tree and these, this growing portion of your file system goes to a second new Spectrum Protect server. And for sure you are not limited here in the number of Spectrum Protect servers. The limitation here, and this is the con of this uh, of the setup, is that the MM backup processing is still on the file system level. That means that all the different server standards are processed sequentially. The processing is still parallel because you have multiple Spectrum Protect backup archive client processes that run in parallel to back up the data, but the different surface sensors will process sequentially from MM backup. In a setup, this looks like as shown on slide number 13, so you have still some root directories on a high level in your file system as shown here in, in the orange box. And then the DSM sys file could look like this one here in the black box where you have your stanza number one, which is called server one, and this excludes directory three and four, so that means this server stanza will back up only directory one and two. 
And the same, but just the opposite, would be the second server stanza, which is curl server 2 here, which excludes directory 3 and 4 from processing. So the processing here, based on the server stanza, is mutual exclusive, and this is implemented with the exclude steer rule. As shown in the blue box here, the ML backup command could be used as follows. And the important part is here that you use the dash dash tsm dash server argument and specify both server standards and your scope is still file system level. That means MN backup will process server one first, which includes directory one and two, and after that it will process server two, and this includes then directory three and four. And with that you can simply flip your file system to different TSM servers and back up to different TSM servers. Now we come to the, I would say, newest approach. We have some customers where we have implemented that. And this approach can be used for really large environments. Therefore, I called it XL. So the difference here is that in addition to the exclude rules we used to split directories on a high level to different Spectrum Protect servers, we introduce file sets and we introduce especially independent file sets of Spectrum scale to achieve a parallel processing of MM backup. And the reason for that is that we implemented MM backup in a way that it can run on an independent file set independent from the rest of the file system. And the scalability here is for sure billions of files because you can have multiple Spectrum Protect servers to back up your root file set, which includes the directories and exclude rules you have specified before, and the new file set you have implemented in your Spectrum Scale file system, which includes a lot of data, and can split the file set and have file set to Spectrum Protect server connection. So with this approach, increasing the number of Spectrum Protect servers and the parallel processing of MM backup significantly. So the pro is here for sure it's extremely scalable. With each new file set you implement, you can add another Spectrum Protect server to the environment. But for sure, such an environment and a setup must be planned wisely because you establish a static connection between a file set and a Spectrum Protect server. This static connection should be planned so that it is working not just in the next month but also for years probably. And because of the multiple processing of MM backup on the same node in the same Spectrum and Spectrum scale cluster, you need to plan how to run MM backup here to prevent resource over allocation. So a setup for such an environment could look like as shown on slide number 17. You have still your directories 1, 2, 3, and 4 from your legacy environment, and then you added two file sets, which is called file set F set 1 and F set 2. And in the DSM sys file, two more server stanzas were added. Due to the fact that these server stanzas are used for file sets exclusively, it is not required to do the exclude here as we have done that for the root directories before. And in the blue box you can see how you can run an MM backup now on this file system to do the legacy data processing but also the processing of the new file sets. I'm starting with the first line here, which is nearly equal to what we have seen before, some slides earlier. You specify with the dash dash tsm dash server, the server number one and two. Those will be processed sequentially, but the scope of this backup is now inode space, which means that MM backup will process only the inode space from your legacy file system, but not the inode space from your new independent file set. And then in the second row, 
you can start MM Backup on your file set number one, specify the server stanza for server three, and have again the scope set to inode space. And the same for server number four and your file set number two. And these three MM Backup processes can run in parallel because the independent inode tables from the file sets allow parallel processing. So this can be run in parallel and can increase the parallelism of your backup and also scalability and performance of your backup. Due to the fact that this setup is complicated and could not be planned wisely, we have written and published a white paper that describes in detail how to set up such an environment how to configure the Spectrum Protect client, and how to run and maintain such an environment in daily processing. You can find a lot of information in this paper, which is helpful. We also added a lot of policy rules here that can be used to figure out special information you might need in your daily processing and maintenance of the environment. So if you plan to implement such a feeder scale data protection approach for your spectrum scale file system, it is recommended to read this paper here. As mentioned before, the architecture is that you have multiple spectrum scale nodes, install the spectrum protect archive client, and optional the spectrum protect for space management client on these nodes and run back up to multiple Spectrum Protect servers in parallel. The reason why I mentioned Spectrum Protect for space management here is that another feature, which is called Zobar, is supported in such an environment and you can take advantage of it. Zobar is a fast disaster recovery solution, which is more or less a metadata image backup for a spectrum scale file system. And what you can do here with Zobar is you can collect the metadata image of your file system, which includes the inode table, the directory tree, all file names, and all file metadata like ACL and EA data. Collect that in some smaller files and back up these files to the Spectrum Protect server. Later on, if you have a disaster with this file system and you need to recover the full file system because it's gone, you just have to restore these small metadata image files to unpack these files in a newly created file system and after a short time frame, you are back to production with your file system because Zoba recreates the full inode table, all file metadata, the file directory tree, and also all files and all ACL and EA data. So this is this processing is very quick. It, it brings you back to production with a file system after a full file system disaster very quickly. At this time, Spectrum Protect for Space Management is required because after your Zoba restore, all files will be available just in sub format and must be recalled from Spectrum Protect for Space Management. Therefore, if you plan to use SOBA, it is required that you implement Spectrum Protect for Space Management in this environment as well. If you use both clients, Spectrum Protect Backup Archive Client with MN Backup and Spectrum Protect for Space Management to take advantage of the SOBA feature, so-called active server binding will be enabled automatically from the client. And this active server binding ensures that if a file was sent to a specified Spectrum Protect server from the backup client and has to be migrated later on with Spectrum Protect for space management, it can go only to the same server. So this implementation of this active server binding ensures that the HSM file and the backup file will always go to the same server to ensure that the integration of both clients for sub-restore and for inline copy backup will work correctly in such a huge environment. On slide number 
22. I have added some information from a uh, real customer implementation. And what we have done here is we have split it a huge spectrum scale file system in three different portions. We have all the legacy data in a so-called temp area in the file system and back up this temp area to a Spectrum Protect server with two versions of backup, with a daily backup, and we have no HSM enabled on this temp portion of the file system. Then we have another portion which is implemented in an independent file set, which is used for production data, which changes frequently, and we back up daily four versions of this uh, file system to the Spectrum Protect server. This data is sent to a disk pool on the Spectrum Protect server. Again, on this file set, we have HSM not enabled. Then a third portion of the file system is an archive area. After the data is not longer needed in the production, the user will just move it into this archive area. After the data arrived here, it will get back up and the backup is running once per day here, but we keep only one version. And we have a daily HSM processing so that the data is moved to HSM shortly after it uh, arrived in the archive area. From the file set number two, the archive data, we have just a small landing area on disk and all the data is migrated then on the Spectrum Protect server to tape very quickly. At the end of my presentation, I have here collected some useful links you might use if you plan such an environment. And as you can see here, again, the, uh, the link to the PETA scale data protection paper, which describes the um, setup of multiple spectrum protect servers by using the file set capabilities of spectrum scale. But we have also some other papers here which might be helpful if you implement such an environment. Especially our paper that describes how Spectrum Protect can support Spectrum Scale AFM for a global cluster or for a widespread stretch cluster of Spectrum Scale. And this brings me to the end of the presentation. I'm giving back to Trisha. Yeah, great. Thank you, Dominique. We do have some questions that I'd like you to answer. The first question has to do with Spectrum Protect and Spectrum Scale, and if you have any type of land-free piece. Here, let me read the entire question. If we have ESS and an internal network, can we connect to this network, our Spectrum Protect servers, and then can we use backup land-free? If yes, do we need a SAN agent for this? So the answer to this is, ESS does not allow to connect a storage area network. So the connectors on the ESS are only LAN and TCP IP connectors. But you can implement with the LAN-free uh, technology with the storage agent, and we, I think we call it server-free backup. This is equal to LAN-free backup, but since ESS does not allow LAN-free, we call it server free, but it's the same technology. So the data will go directly to ESS and to the storage pools, and the server is just used to hold the metadata. And the next two questions have to do with how Spectrum Scale builds the Shatter database. The first question is, how does that scan work inside of Spectrum Scale to build that database? And then back up, read the configuration of, of Spectrum Protect, that means the DSM sys file, especially the exclude rules. And it will translate the exclude rules into policy statements. And these policy statements and policy rules will be used to use the Spectrum Scale policy engine to scan the file system, but scan only the portions of the file system which are not excluded. Then the policy scan will collect all the metadata information from the files that is required to do the comparison between the files in the file system or in a snapshot and the files 
in the previous ShadowDB. So the format and the result of the scan will be equal to the ShadowDB format and the two different contents can simply compare them. Okay, and then the follow-on question is, if a file has been deleted from the scale file system, how would Spectrum Protect know that it now uh, needs to be turned to be inactive? If a file was deleted from the file system, then MM Backup will put it in a list of files that have to be expired on the TSM server, and it will just issue the command DSMC expire and issue this for the given file then. And the version on the, on the Spectrum Protect server will be zapped from active to inactive then with this expire command. And the next question is, how would you be able to find one file, one, one Spectrum scale file, and which Spectrum Protect server it might have been backed up to? How could we search across the various Spectrum Protect servers associated with the Spectrum scale? To know which files were backed up to which Spectrum Protect server, you need for sure know the configuration in the DSM sys file. So it is recommended to plan this wisely because it's static. If you define it once, you don't want to change that later on. And you can prepare some kind of a table that shows which portions of the file system goes to which server. And in the white paper I talked about, we have prepared such kind of a table. One of the pages in this white paper has such an empty table and can be used to prepare such a table. And this must be available to know later on which files were back up to which server to query them. If you use the active server binding, that means Spectrum Protect for Space Management is used here, then you can use the policy engine to scan the file system and find the files and find also on which server these files were backed up because this information is available as a metadata information in the file system then. And the, the white paper I spoke about provides policy rules that can be used to do exactly this, to query the file system and find the files which belong to a to specified server. Great, thank you. So Dominic, thank you so much for your time today and thank you everyone for joining our call.